Okay, so first of all, I have got here marked out that's the size of my plate, that's the size of my paper, and so every time I'm going to do this, I'm going to pop the plate there, I'm going to pop the paper there. So you need some form of registration. Uh, there's a few different ways of doing registration. Uh, this is probably the simplest one. And the first thing I'm going to do is come over here and I'm going to do a pochoir print. Yellow in there too, just for a nice effect. Getting these fiddly pieces on just the right area to be tricky. Okay, so bring all this out of here. Well, I've lost some people there. So what I've got here is the original plate. I've put some clear plastic over top. And with that bit of leaf there, I just dabbed a little bit of green on it. And so that's all trapped underneath here. What I want to do is remove quite a lot of the excess ink there. And we do that just by running a print through. So I'm sort of chucking that on. Doesn't matter about registration with this one. And take the boat in port side. Okay, so the first one is taking off a lot of that excess ink that I don't want. When I remove this, there should be ink left underneath. Enough to give some sort of a, a pattern. Here because it's a one piece. I'm going to wipe a bit here. The reason I'm wiping a bit there is because this particular species is called a white lip snake. And what that should give me is very subtle colour. So this is where I am being very careful to line that up. And I'm do it from the top. Down. So I have to remember that I've done it from the top down. This side. I'm going for our first print. So I'm going to print this three times. first print. Take him out of the way. You can see it's just taken a link off there. But what you've got is a whole tonal range through there and that's the purpose of putting those little bits of plastic on there is to trap some ink underneath. stage if I so wanted to I can chuck in a few other colours just a little bit of blue to make it more green in places so 
So this is obviously not an addition, this is just playing around with one-off Unix state. That's better, more green. I feel a bit inclined to leave some of the edges. Also working really small. The smaller you work, the harder the registration. Uh, if you're registering something really big and it's out a millimetre, it doesn't matter. If this is out a little bit. Uh, yeah, you probably notice it. So I'm hoping the colours are so subtle that it's not going to worry too much. The other thing comes down to your design as well. If you've got a really strong, bold design, again, it might not matter so much. So, comic book artists like Jack Kirby in the 60s had these really super strong, bold lines. And so when the registration was out, because the comic book printers would be you know, pretty cheap, it didn't matter. Andy Warhol had Marilyn who was iconic and so everyone knew the image. But if the image is not iconic, if it's not easy to recognise, then using fine lines uh, can get lost in colour work. Here we go. Second pass through the press. Look at that, there's all sorts of colours bouncing around there. So hopefully this next one's going to be bold enough to handle that. I'm now doing the tea plate, the black one. Everyone's so quiet. Well, <laughs> is it, are you doing the original thing you printed from? You're yes. In black now. Yes. So I just use my etching plate as the base for the what I call plush bar. And I'm hoping at the end of this you should see a nice white lip mm. on the snake. The other thing you'll find is some colours are easier to use in a print than others. Like if you're just using bright yellows, if that's out of registration, you hardly notice it at all. Whereas red or brown that's out of registration, you'll notice it straight away. Uh, so anything that has uh, a very light value is going to print easy. It's going to, if it's out of registration, it's not going to matter. But anything that's very dark, a heavy colour, you'll really notice it when it's out of registration. It's only ever as good as hell. Carefully put that down. Right. Moment of truth. Let's see if it worked. Oh. A little bit out of register. Oh no. It's sticking. That's why I winced. I saw it. You saw it stick? Oh no, it's stuck. Oh no, that's effortless. Yeah. But that She's come right. out well, yeah. The white lip bit came out well. Yeah, so what? I probably need a little bit more oil in the ink. The ink was probably a bit stiff. And it's stuck to this polymer here. So this is a photopolymer. Mm. And so sometimes polymers can react a bit funny with the ink if you're not careful. 
So yeah. The paper is probably uh, the paper is probably a little bit damp. Yeah. So over damp paper and ink that probably should have been a little bit thinner would have solved that problem. So. Anyway, get the idea. Yeah, it's a shame. Now if I wanted to <clears throat> go that little bit further, what I could have done is with the final print have bits of chincolet stuck on there as well. Mm. And then it would have given me yet another layer of colour as well. So the plastic bits was posh white? Yeah. Can you say that was a bit yeah, the sort yeah. Of beginning to get these little leaves and things you put a little it's bit. It's kind of pochoir used in reverse. Pochoir usually you have little thin sheets of aluminium or I don't know, thin sheets of plastic and mm -hmm. you cut them into shape and you just add you just roll some colour on it. Mm. When you're doing it with something this small, it's too fiddly. And what I tend to do is use it just to trap a bit of ink underneath. So that sort of funny edge there is the edge of the plastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's sort of come out. Um, the green thing shifted that way a little bit. And the other way, if I, if I didn't get those blotchy bits there, and I didn't like that edge, the other thing I could do there is cut this out really fine, really carefully, and then shinkalay that into a nicer piece of paper. Mm. So, so I'm cleaning up the yeah. edge. 